as promised, here is the epsilon delta definition of the limit. Um, it says that if we get, if we're saying that the limit as x approaches c of f of x is equal to l, that means for every real number, so notice we're not working with hyperreals, for every real number, and it's positive, so for every positive real number, there is another real number, delta, um, such that as long as x minus c is less than delta, then f of x minus l is less than epsilon. And hopefully from the previous videos, you get an intuition. This is saying that as long as, so x minus c being less than delta is really saying that x uh, looks like c plus or minus delta. Um, well, actually not equal to, because I'm saying it's less than. So let me write that correctly. Um, it's saying that x is less than, uh, I guess, uh, c plus or minus delta. But uh, really what it's saying is that x is approximately c plus delta. So if x minus c is less than delta, that's saying that x is approximately c plus delta, then f of x minus l is less than epsilon, which is really telling me that f of x is approximately l plus or minus epsilon. Or in other words, you could say that what this is measuring is that is, um, if x is close enough to C, right? So it just looks like this is my error. Then F, the function, is close to L. Right? That's, that's this over here. And how close? Well, it's this epsilon that tells you how close I want to be. And if it's in the limit, then it says for any real number, you can make epsilon as big as you want, which typically is easy to solve then, or as small as you want. The difference between here and hyperreal definition is that we're sticking with the reals. We're not going to the infinitesimals. If you recall, the, the limit definition using infinitesimals says that if um, x is infinitely close to c, then f of x is infinitely close to L. Well, that's kind of what we're seeing here, except for we're not going into the hyperreals. We're getting around it by just saying, well, for any real number, epsilon, I can always make x close enough to C so that f of x is as close as I need it to be to L. That my I can make my error here as small as I want, and that'll just give me, it'll shrink probably my range on x, but It'll still, I can always find a range in x so that um, the, the function's output is as close as I need it to be to l. So let's look at some examples of using this definition to prove that uh, the value of a limit. So we did this back uh, when we first looked at limits and we our proof arguments always went over into the hyperreals. We start with some number x that's infinitely close to c and show that the output would be infinitely close to l. So how do we do this using this epsilon delta definition, which by the way, in the kind of the history of math, this definition didn't come around until about a hundred years after the invention of calculus by Newton and Leibniz. By um, Weierstrass is, gets credit for this, uh, but it was a lot of mathematicians kind of working on this idea. and how did Leibniz or Newton think about limits? Exactly as we've been teaching it in this class, using hyperreals. Um, the issue was that there was concerns in the math community that this was a little bit of flaky math and some concerns that maybe uh, contradictions might come up and arise. So they wanted to get themselves on, on grounded. Uh, um, you know, they wanted to work only with the reals. They didn't want to play with these hyperreal numbers that were, were kind of funny to them. Um, and as I've said before, it wasn't until the 70s that actually it was proven by mathematicians uh, that 
um, this notion of the hyperreal is just as solid and sturdy of a number system as the real numbers. But I digress. Let's look at this um, in play. So let's prove. Um, uh, so let's prove that the limit as x approaches 5 of 5p is equal to 25. And we know this is a continuous function, so this is a no-brainer, but I want to use the epsilon delta argument to show that this is true. So how does it work? So I want, so I want, and this is how I'll typically start, I'll start with what I want to be true. I want that uh, 5p minus 25, that that their distance away from each other is less than some epsilon, some real number epsilon, some positive real number epsilon. I want that to be true. So let's say that's true. Well, if this is true, then it's also true that I can factor a 5 out. And this should be awfully familiar to from that very first video, that if I factor that 5 out, this will be less than epsilon. In that first video, instead of having epsilon here, we had a concrete number, 0 0.1, but the algebra worked exactly the same. And now, if I divide both sides by 5, I get that p minus 5 is less than epsilon over 5. So, I started with what I wanted to be true. And it showed me if this is true, then this statement has to be true. These two are equivalent, and these two are equivalent, which now gives me uh, bounds on my p. Um, uh, this should be a p, I guess. Um, this is a bounds on my p. So now, this was my scratch work. All this was just scratch work. So now I'm going to actually write out the proof. So what does the proof look like? So I put a line here. Proof. Because the proof has to start with this idea. I have to start with any arbitrary epsilon. Then I have to provide to the reader a delta that depends on epsilon likely, such that as long as x minus c, or in our case p minus 5 is less than delta, then uh, f minus 25 will be less than epsilon. And we know exactly what it needs to be. So, proof. Given epsilon bigger than zero. This we don't know anything about, we just know that it's a positive number because we have to show it's true for every positive epsilon. Given epsilon bigger than zero, let's let delta be equal to epsilon over five. And as stated in the theorem, delta is dependent on the value of epsilon. If epsilon gets smaller, delta is going to get smaller. If epsilon gets bigger, then delta will get bigger. So. Let delta be epsilon over 5. Then if, and we've got to show if something's true, the other is true. And what do we need to show? We need to show that, uh, I've made a mess of this, let's clean this up, that provided that the value that I'm going to in the limit, so as long as x minus c is less than delta, if that's true, then this statement has to be true. And we can follow our nose in this because we have that um, if um, p minus 5 is less than delta. Well, what is delta? This is just equal to epsilon over 5. If this is true, then what's true? Well, I can multiply both sides by 5. That 5 times p minus 5 is less than epsilon. And if that's true, well, I can distribute this through, and this tells me that um, 5p minus 25 is less than epsilon. Therefore, since this is true for every epsilon, the limit as p approaches 5 of 5p is equal to 25. I don't know why I wrote 24, about 25. And there we have it. 
just like our, our uh, this is this is using the definition epsilon definition that this was our L this is our f of p and here is our c in our example in our in our definition so we started with any real number epsilon we chose a delta that depended on epsilon in our case it happened to be epsilon over 5 and we see that if p minus 5 is less than delta then 5p minus 25 is less than epsilon therefore the limit as p approaches 5, 5p is equal to 25. 